Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use BSP brushes. We're going to go ahead and we'll quickly cover all of the parameters on a BSP brush and what we'd use it for. There is a more in-depth video on how you use BSP brushes in order to white box a level. So please check that out for more video. We were going to create a BSP box brush to start with. Under our modes BSP, you have box as one of your options. We go ahead and drag it in. We now have our BSP box, and you'll notice it has a default checkerboard material. If we were to drag another one in, it's going to be the same. What we want to do is we are going to set this up so that way it automatically has a material applied when we drag it in. And that is actually very simple. Select a material and drag your box in. That's it. By default, when you create a BSP or geometry brush, it's going to have whatever material you have selected at the time as the default applied material to all of its surfaces. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and make sure we have one selected when we create some brushes. So here's our default brush. We want to make a floor for our player to stand on to start with, because right now if we hit play, they're going to fall to their death. So let's go ahead and adjust this brush to make it work. This brush itself is currently set to additive. That means it adds it to the world. It is a box shape and it has a X, Y, and Z of 200. This is the dimensions of the box. Let's go ahead and make this larger. Let's make it 2000, 2020. And now we have a flat surface that our player can actually start on. And you'll notice they're no longer going to fall through the floor. So we're good to go there. If you want to adjust the size, you can use the brush settings here. Or let's go ahead and drag another brush in. We'll move it up here so that we can actually see it easier. You can use the scaling. We can change to our scale and scale along the Y, the Z, or the X as needed. And that will work perfectly fine as well. If you notice, as I scale, the brush is going to look roughly the same. The only real difference is our texture is going to be stretched because we have a UV going across one to one with a 200 for the size. Let's change this to 100, for example. There we go. And it's not set to actually be as small as this. And we will adjust that shortly. So we have our box here. Let's move him down and move him over. So that way we have him for what we're going to go over texture alignment. So we have our box. Let's go over the other options for our box itself. We have our surface material, which is the material applied to all surfaces. If, for example, you need to, let's say you dragged in a box and it did not have anything applied to it, and you wanted to apply something to it. Well, if you drag and drop, it's going to apply it to whatever surface you literally drop it onto. Now, this is a little bit of pain in the butt if you forget, but there is a way of making that quicker. So let's go ahead and drop another box in, and let's say you actually wanted to apply a material to all sides. By default, whatever you click on on the box is what you have selected, that surface. We can actually go in here, go down to Geometry, Select, and select the entire brush. This will select all six sides of the brush. We can drop our material on, and we now have it completely set up. The Select down here has multiple options, and this is useful if you want to select different surfaces or different brushes that you want to do the same action on. If we throw a wall into our example, we can go ahead and see this in action. So let's go ahead and take a box, drop it in here. We'll go ahead and stretch our wall. We'll make our wall a little bit taller. And there we go, we now have a wall. We have two issues with the wall. For one thing, we use stretch, which means our texture is stretched. And our floor and wall don't exactly have the same matching pattern. So how would we adjust that? Well, we have a few ways of doing it. We'll go ahead and cover that. We have our alignment. We have our manual and automatic alignment. Manual, we have panning the surface. So for example, this will pan in the right direction, 1 64th, and you'll notice the texture moves to the side. If we flip this, the texture moves back. Same thing with vertical in both directions. So that's how you can manually pan the texture. We can rotate as needed, as you can see here. And then you can also flip the U and the V. If we had a different texture, it would be more apparent, but you'll notice that the darker ones 
our switching places as we flip our U and our V. So we have two things to correct here. First of all, we want to adjust the scale. We want to make it where the wall is the same scale as the floor. Well, if you look down here, you have scale. Let's go in and it should be pretty simple. We'll change our scale to one and hit apply. And now you'll notice the scale of the cubes on the wall match the scale of the cubes on the floor. But you'll notice that we are still off by an alignment issue. Well, we can go in here. We've already discussed this. Oops. We've actually rotated it. So let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. And there we go. And we can use this to manually adjust our UV offset. But let's say, for example, it is not how we want it. Let's say it's off and we can't quite get it exact. It's just not quite working. We can use our manual alignment, I'm sorry, our automatic, automatic alignment options. To do that, simply select your surface. In this case, we're going to want to make the whole thing. So we'll select our brush and we'll use the alignment option for planar. If you think of your entire world of having a grid starting from zero and expanding out in all directions, that's your plane, that's your planar grid. If we align planarly, then that means everything is going to be aligned texture wise on that same plane. So we select this, align surface planar, select our floor, align surface planar. You'll now notice they match up. We now have a surface that's matched up. If we were to take a box, for example, drop it into here. We'll go ahead and throw it in here. We'll move it up a little bit so it's kind of weird looking. It doesn't match. We can select our entire box, match the surface planar. And now you notice it looks kind of like it's just simply part of it and extending out. That's simple. That is what our surface alignment options are for. You'll find other ones such as along the wall, along the floor, surface box and surface fit. Surface fit, basically our texture is two across and two down. It's this grid you see right here. When you use surface fit, it will fit that texture to the entire surface. Let's take our larger one here and do surface fit. And you'll notice we have a two by two. That is what surface fit does. That's not what we want, but that's what it does. Let's go ahead and change these back to planar. So that way I actually have everything matched up nicely for our wall. So you have your alignment options and that allows you to set up alignments quickly and easily. When you're white boxing, it's not really that big of a deal, but it is kind of nice to have at least a, a matching aesthetic. So that way your eyes don't go cross eyed when you're wondering why things look weird. So those are our surface and geometry sections that you can see here. You can pretty much ignore lighting unless you're working with lighting. These are our normal lighting and light mass options. If you've messed with them once, you know what to do. The higher the resolution, the better your light mapping will be. The default 32 is perfectly fine for what we're doing here. So let's go with our brush type subtractive option and figure out what that does. These are both additive. If I was to take this box, change it to subtractive, you'll now find we have a hole inside of our other wall. Let's make this wall a little bit thinner on the X. So that way it actually is a wall we can look through and we'll go ahead and change our alignment back. And there we go. What we have here is a additive wall, which is solid and a subtractive box, which is solid as well, but subtractive that will subtract whatever it intersects with that is solid. And as you can see, it makes a wall that we can see through. Now, for some of our other options, you'll find them hidden down here. We have polygons, which basically allows you to merge and separate polygons. Solidity, which is solid, semi-solid and non-solid. Basically the difference being a solid object will block actors and projectiles. A non-solid object will do the same, but you cannot subtract. It's not, so as you can see, subtractive does not work. And then non-solid is the same. Subtractive does not work. However, it does not black block actors and projectiles. You could use this for things that are just simply there for appearance sake. Let's go ahead and change this back to subtractive. Let's change it back to solid. And now we have a hole in our wall. Let's say we want to take and we're going to, let's actually just do this easy. We'll go ahead and alt drag over a duplicate rotate. Actually, no, let's delete that. Let's add in another box. 
And let's go ahead and scale this box over and up. And we have another wall that we put in here. And we actually decided we want this window to be over there. If we take our subtractive block, drag it over, and drop it in, you'll notice it does not subtract. BSP brushes are drawn basically in the order that they are created from first to last. So for example, I created this as solid and it puts it into solid in the screen. Then I created this wall and it put it in solid and put it in the scene. Now our subtractive brush, which of course I can't, let me rename this to sub. I couldn't select because I couldn't see it. Our subtractive brush is then drawn next. It will subtract, of course, from this one because we drew the solid wall first and then we drew the subtractive brush next. Now here's our issue. After we've drawn our subtractive brush, we've gone ahead and we've drawn this additive brush. So if you think about it, what we're doing is we're taking the subtractive brush, erasing everything inside of it, which is air right now. And then we are taking this brush, which is solid and adding it on top of it. So we're basically filling in everything we subtracted, which was nothing. To fix that, we have our order option. The easiest way to think of this is you want to do your subtractive operations last unless there's a specific thing. So we'll just go to subtractive volume, go to order, go to last, and it's now drawing our subtractive box last. So if we went ahead and we move this all the way through, I'll make this a little bit thinner. Once again, let's see, that's going to be on our Y. We now have another window. And there we go. That is how you would adjust. If you're having issues with subtractive, make sure that they are done in order. Now you will all notice, also notice something really funky. Let's make this a little thicker so we can actually see that. You'll notice that while we have the outside being this untextured gray, our inside is actually blue. Well, again, it's done in order and it's done based on the order of operations. This subtractive brush, since it is assigned a blue material, it is what determines what you are seeing because it is subtracting. So if we wanted this to be white, for example, it would be white. If we wanted it to be untextured, it would be untextured. The subtractive material is what will show, assuming I can get in there, what is inside of the subtractive volume. So for example, that's why we have the different colors. If we wanted to take this one, we'll go ahead and select it to brush white. And there we go. Nothing matches up, of course. So let's go ahead and select our matchy brush. Let's go ahead and select, uh, let's see, one of these. I think it's a coplanar surfaces. That'll select everything that touches it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set our alignment to surface planar so it matches up. And you'll notice now everything is matching, including our inside brush. And it actually looks like everything was built in together. So obviously we don't have the back because I didn't have, that's not coplanar to this, but that's not really a big deal for our example here. So those are your options and that's your order. Align brush vertices is useful if you are working in the editing mode, which we'll cover in a second, and you need to work outside of the grid. You'll notice I'm using a five grid value and I have snapping enabled. Brushes should always be created with snapping enabled and snapping to the grid if you have the choice. There are issues if it is not, so just snap to the grid. It just, it'll solve the problems and you don't have to worry about it. So let's say our next option, let's say we have our wall here and we wanna make another version of the wall and another version of the wall. Or let's say for example, let's pull this over. This is the wall we wanna use in our game. That's the exact size. And now we wanna give it off to someone else to texture or to play with. Well. This is what our create static mesh option is for. We can select our wall. We can create a static mesh. Actually, let's go ahead and select our wall and select our sub. We'll create a static mesh. We'll go into our meshes folder. We'll name this windowed wall and we'll save it out. So now if we go into meshes, we now have a windowed wall, which we can use for recreating. So let's drag another windowed wall in here and you'll notice, boom, we have a windowed wall. <laughs> I had this down so you couldn't see half of it, but there you go. We actually have a static mesh made out of our BSP brushes that we can now retexture or 
We could put in as part of a blueprint, for example, or whatever you wanted to do with it. And it was that simple. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you have a BSP brush, we have our solidity option. It is solid. When you create a static mesh, let me go ahead and move this in. Out of a BSP brush, you'll notice it has no solidity. When you create a static mesh inside of Unreal Engine 4 from a BSP brush, by default, if we edit our mesh, you will find it has no collision assigned to it. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind. Create collision either externally in your 3D modeling package or use, for example, on this one, we'll just make a simple box and we'll go ahead and save that out. And now if we run it again, now I have simple collision on my mesh itself. So for example, if we were to take this floor and turn it into a static mesh, the next time we ran it, we would fall to our desk and we would be like, well, why is this happening? Keep in mind, you need to create collision when you convert over to a static mesh. So we've covered our basics. Let's cover something a little more advanced. Let's say we wanted to make a ramp. Well, in our box here, we don't have a ramp option. We have cone, cylinder, curved stairs, linear stairs, spiral stairs. You can play with these. They're all basically the same. Basic BSP brush, just with some pre-done templates that will basically fit these options. But we want something a little more advanced, but we don't want to model it out in our 3D program. Well, we have our geometry tree editing, or Shift F5 option at the top, that will actually allow us to do basic 3D modeling techniques. We can select surfaces by simply clicking on the surface. You can select edges by clicking on the edge, and this is a giant pain in the ass for me, like that. Or you can select vertexes by clicking on the vertex itself. And using basic 3D modeling techniques, we can take this edge, which again, I have so much trouble clicking on. Okay, there we go. We can take our edge and we'll go ahead and we'll drag it up into a ramp. Then we'll take our surface here, drag it out to make it longer. Then we'll find our other edge here and drag it down. And since we have snapping, it's pretty easy to get it set up on the bottom and drop it in. And we have a ramp. We go back here. We now have a ramp that we could texture and we can do whatever we want with. If we run our game, assuming I move the ramp away from our player. Let's move it, rotate it. 90 degrees, drag it over, drag it out and hit play. And we now have a ramp that we can actually walk up for our level using the power of geometry editing. You have other options in here, optimizing, optimizing, triangulating if you're going to export this to a 3D modeling program, optimizing it, flipping if you need to flip surfaces. You can extrude things, you can do pens, you know, for cutting sides. So there's a ton of options here. For the most part, you just need to experiment with them and you can, um, you know, you, you can get some weird, weird things happening, weird effects happening, stuff like that. But for the most part, you're gonna, just going to um, block out your levels using BSPs and you're going to use the basic adjustments using the geometry editing. And that is it. That is all of our basic functions for our BSP or geometry brushes. If there's any more questions or anything you'd like to comment about, please comment below. If you want more uses, like what would we use this for, check out the white boxing with BSP brushes video and it will walk through a basic how to make a simple level using BSP brushes.